Success as an AC and independent business owner is not guaranteed, but rather influenced by an individual's specific efforts. No one is guaranteed success as an IBO. This presentation was recorded during the Sydney International Event March 24-26, 2017. This presentation may contain information regarding the ACN compensation plan, promotions and product pricing which has changed since the date of the recording. Views expressed and any claims of comparisons made by IBOs presenting are theirs and not ACNs. Please check acnpacific.com and the IBO back office for an up-to-date information. And I'm just grateful and privileged to be here to deliver some information to you that helped me change my life, uh, helped me change my family's life and to help change the lives of people all over the world. Uh, I, for those of you that don't know my story, I'll say it really quickly. I was born and raised in Toronto, Canada uh, from Italian immigrants. So my parents came when they were very young. Why they stopped in Canada when it was so cold, I have no idea. They could have kept going further south. They didn't. Oh well. Uh, but it's a good thing I have residual income so I can move further south. So now I live in warmer climates. Uh, that's why I love Australia. The climate here is unbelievable. But my father taught me some very important business lessons growing up. The first lesson he taught me was to always have multiple sources of income. So when I was approached for this business, I was, I was, uh, one of my best friends called me, his name is Amar Singh. Amar and I had been business partners in other businesses. He calls me up, I'll never forget this for as long as I live. It's like one of those magical phone calls that you know will lead to something special. He called me up and he said, Franco! I go, yes? Oh my gosh, I found it. I go, found what? Time and money together. I go, what? Time and money together. What are you talking about? You know, I found it. Time and money together. I said, Amar, have you been again? <laughs> it's Canada. We do that there, right? <laughs> okay, I'll, I'm here too. Okay, I got it. <laughs> so he goes, no, I found it. Time and money together. Okay, I don't know what you're talking about. He goes, you just got to come see a business opportunity. I said, fine, I will come see a business. He was so excited, I couldn't say no to him. So I went to go look at the ACN opportunity, and I was like, I was flabbergasted, because up until that point, let me tell you my, what my life looked like. I was working 80 to 100 hours a week. I had many companies, but I was exhausted. I used to sleep on the couch in my office. That's how hard I was working. Why? Because I, that's what I was supposed to do. Now, from the outside looking in, you think, wow, look at Franco. He has this incredible life, all these businesses. Yes, but I was exhausted. Where do you think all the hair went from all the stress? <laughs> I used to have really nice hair at one point. I have pictures to prove it. Now I delete them all. You're not going to find any pictures of me with hair. If you do, erase them. And, but you know what? That's the way it was. And then when I saw this, I go, wow, I see it. Now, look, who knows? You never know when you start something where it's going to go. So I started it part-time, a couple hours a week. You know, I did a home meeting. Uh, I did a couple home meetings. I did three home meetings. I got 30 people to come see the opportunity. Six people got started from those uh, three home meetings. I got 14 customers. And my business started to go. And I wasn't very good for the first couple of years. I didn't understand the system. I didn't follow the system. I didn't know what it was. I wasn't very coachable. I was very... Uh, under, not understanding of how to build this business, how simple it was. I made it more complicated than it actually was. But when I finally understood and I got what it is to be successful here and how simple it is, man, my business exploded and my whole life changed. Like, I mean, everything changed. I went from never taking vacations to now can take a vacation whenever I want. In fact, my whole life is a vacation. Like, who thinks this is working? <laughs> you know, like I come to Australia, I get to tour, have fun, have a blast, come here, talk, and go home. Ooh, what a life. Like, it's not, who would like to have that life? That great life? It's a great life. Change people's lives and go home. It's an unbelievable experience. You know, one of my dreams was always to be a pilot. So I started taking flying lessons. Now, for those of you... Uh, that are like you heard a bunch of people got promoted here that were engineers right good for them I am the opposite so I am mechanically challenged in the worst way so I'll give you an example how bad it was when I started taking flying lessons I couldn't even find the oil tap in my car and they were going to trust me with an airplane think about that so I started taking flying lessons 
And I remember it was hard, but here's the good news. I had time and money together. When you have time and money together, you can hire a really good tutor. You can hire a really good teacher. And I remember him sitting across from me sometimes and thinking to me, he was like, he looked at me while I was teaching me, he goes, Franco, you don't understand anything I'm telling you, do you? I go, no, I don't. <laughs> he repeated, I remember sometimes he'd be training me till midnight, one o'clock in the morning. But you know what? I had time and money together, so guess what? I could. And then I thought, you know what? I'm learning on an airplane that's not going to be my airplane. Why don't I go buy one? Why? Because I have time and money together. So I went out and I bought an airplane. In fact, the factory is in the United States. I went, I flew to the factory to pick up my airplane. So cool. So when you walk in, they roll the red carpet because they made the plane specifically for me. I designed it, the colors, everything. So they roll this red carpet. I go in, there's like, you know, big celebration. They roll out my airplane. So cool. And I'm like, oh, where's my airplane? <laughs> and um, the airport where they make the airplanes is on a military, near, near a military base. And there's these Air Force pilots that fly F-16s. And I, as I rolled up the plane, I had to go and sign some papers, because uh, obviously they wanted to get paid, so they were all, you know, signed some papers. And then as I'm going out, I see the F-16 pilots looking at my airplane. I go, what are they doing? So I go up to them, I go, hello, gentlemen. And they said, is this your airplane? I go, yes. It's phenomenal. I go, what? You fly F-16s. I know, but that belongs to the U.S. government. This is yours. This is different. <laughs> this is your airplane. I go, that's true. It's so funny. So he goes, can we, like, sit down in it? I'm like, these people are weird. They fly F-16s, and they're excited for my airplane. I, I, I didn't get it, but I got it because, see, when something isn't yours, it's not the same. When something is yours that you've earned and paid for, that's different. And so they got to look, and I was like, okay, I was just like, wow, this is kind of cool. And I'll never forget my first flight in my airplane. I had my instructor fly up with me, and then he helped me fly it back while he was training me on it. And I learned to get my license on my own airplane. You know how cool that is? That is so cool. That is just so cool. And I share this story with you because here's what's possible in ACN, whatever you want. Whatever your dream, whatever you can think of is possible in ACN. Whatever your heart desires is possible in ACN. You just have to believe it. And the thing I, that, you know, it's funny because up until that point, I never spent my residual income. You know, because in ACN, we build teams, we get paid customer acquisition bonuses. So I enjoyed, those were great. I lived off the customer acquisition bonuses. And then I saved the residual income. In fact, the first money I ever spent was buying an airplane with my residual income. That's a pretty good deal, right? And the reason I make so much residual income is because of the topic I want to teach today. And the topic I'm going to talk about is customer acquisition and who wants to build an empire of residual income, right? So that's what we're going to talk about. So do I get a clicker or no? I don't know. Yeah, here it is. Yes, I got a clicker. I'm so excited. Okay. Why are you laughing at me? That's not very nice. That wasn't a joke. All right, let's go. So here's the great part about customer acquisition. It makes you wealthy. Yes. Now, let's not forget, you have to build an organization of people that get a lot of customers. So you going out there getting a gazillion customers is not going to make you wealthy. Can we, all, can we agree with that? What's going to make you wealthy is you build an organization of people that acquire a lot of customers. So what there is to master is two things. Number one, building an organization. And number two, teaching that organization how to build customers. And if you can create, uh, if you can help somebody create a simple duplicatable model of people acquiring customers, because here's the good news. We don't need a lot of customers. We need 60 points. Get 75. Knock out an extra 15. You do that and then teach that to your team and you do it through a simple system. I'm going to teach you the way I think is the fastest for people to get their 60, 100 points. Because if you can get this fast within a couple of weeks 
and everybody in your team can do it in a couple of weeks. What's possible in your organization? What's possible with your residual income? People are making 10% of that income. They're, make, they're getting paid on all seven levels. That's very powerful. So let's talk about how you do that. Who's going to be your first customer? Yourself. That's the most important thing. Look, I'm, I am a product. All my services are ACN. And I'll tell you a funny story. Um, before we launched Home Security, I had never had a home security system in my home. For whatever reason, I decided, you know what, let me get a home security system. So I got this crazy fancy home security system that cost me $10,000 in equipment. Two weeks later, ACN launches ADT. <sighs> what do you think I did? Ripped it out and put an ADT. Why? I cannot represent a brand that I don't sell. Can't do it. So I took it all out and then put an ADT. Look, I'm sorry, but I'm going to promote what I own, what I sell. I, I can't do anything but that. I don't understand IBOs that don't do that. How could you have one service and try to sell something else? To me, that has no integrity. So if you're going to be serious about your ACM business, take all the services that you need for your home through your own online store. Okay? The second people who are going to become your customers are prospects from your home meeting. So for those of you that are new, what you're going to do, you're going to do a home meeting, you're going to invite a bunch of people, as many as you can, pack your house, and those that say no, no problem, they're going to become your customers. You're going to have them fill out a customer survey before they start the home meeting, so they fill out the customer survey with all the services and what they're paying, and you'll follow up with them and get them all as customers. Those you, who you do business with, this is a big one, and we're going to talk about this at the end, those who support charities and love to help people, you know, through the Food Bank of Australia, it's phenomenal who you're able to help and help here. And then the referrals, everybody else. So let's talk about how to get customers. First of all, you got to use the proper approach. Help, favor, try. Now, it's funny because when I, when I first saw this, it reminded me of when I was in business. And when I was in business, I understood asking for favors to help me in business. But it's funny, when I first started getting customers, I forgot that principle and I didn't do that. So I'm going to talk about it in a minute. But here's why it's important to use this because it's going to help you acquire a lot of customers. Look at this. This is ridiculous. Look at what the total annual expenditure in, a, in Australia is per family. $4,584. Are you kidding me? 5 to 10% of disposable income goes to the services that we have. Is that a lot of money that's available for all of us? That is ridiculous. So if we approach customers in the right way, we use the right script, we use the right, and we duplicate that out, there is no telling how many customers you can acquire and how much residual income you can build. Now to acquire customers, there's a, six very important things to remember. And all of you should write these down because they're very important. Number one, people are not logical. They're emotional. There is nothing logical about an iPhone. People that wait in line all night to go buy an iPhone is not logical when they go buy the next day or the day after and have no line. Am I, am I correct? Think of how many things, ladies, you buy that's emotional and not logical. And guys, how many times do you go buy a car with the intention of spending this much and then you come out and you spend this much? And you get a whole different car. We are emotional creatures, we're not logical, and that's okay. So use that to your advantage. Most people are not technical. Most people, you know, they, they may use a to, uh, phone that's, that's a smartphone. It doesn't mean they're technical at all. They don't, most people don't even understand their bill. How many of you even understood your bill before ACM? Now you think people understand their bill. No, they still don't understand their bill. Even IBOs don't understand their bills. It's just not, it's just people make bills complicated. Companies make bills complicated. Why? It's on purpose. They don't want you to understand your bill. And then savings is not the most important factor. How do I know? Because most people are with the most expensive companies. That's how I know. So savings is never, and almost never, the most motivating factor. And a lot of people feel great about supporting a cause. This is the most important principle to understand when acquiring customers. And customers respond to the correct approach. So we have to understand that's what customers do. They're, they're going to respond if you approach them directly. So here's what there is to do. There's a secret weapon, and it's called your why. 
And if you learn how to use this secret weapon called your why, there's unlimited customers you're going to be able to acquire. And this took me a few phone calls to remind me of why that is, okay? So your friends and family do not want to be sold. You don't want to be sold. So why would your friends and family want to be sold? If you acquire customers on price, you will lose them on price. I got to tell you, I've lost no customers since I started acquiring customers 11 and a half years ago personally. Now, I've had them leave and become IBOs. I have no problem with that. Take back your own services. Because I don't approach them to get them on price. I get them on the relationship and using my why, which I'm going to share with you in a minute. Okay? People are, are inspired to support you and your cause. Now, how do I know that? Think about this. When you are helping other people, how do you feel? Don't you feel great? Right? So here's the funny part is, we don't allow people the same opportunity to help us. It helps them feel good. I'll give you a little secret about me. I have no problem people helping me. You want to pay for me? Knock yourself out. You want to do me a favor? Please knock yourself out. I have no, because you know why? I know it makes you feel good. Why would I rob you of that? I would never rob another human being of that opportunity. And it creates loyalty and pride. What do I mean by that? What I mean by that is if you're helping someone else and you're helping them change their life, or you know, even in a small way, they feel like they're part of your life. They feel like they're part of your journey. They feel like they're part of what you're creating and what you're doing. The video is Mr. Steve Jobs, and he talks about, and you guys can Google it on YouTube. It's an awesome video. He talks about how he used to love asking for favors to help people, to, for people to help him. And he, what he's learned is that, and that's what I've learned too. And actually, I'm going to do a demonstration. Who wants to come on stage and do a demonstration with me? Who we'll come? Who wants to come? Who wants to come? I can't, you know, come on, young man, come up here, come up here. Let's come up here. Let's give him a big hand. What's your name? John? All right, John, have a seat, John. All right. I don't know if this thing works, but yeah, just sit on the thing. Hold that, I don't know if it works. Okay? Jeez. So let, John is going to be me, okay? And I'll tell you guys all a funny story. So when I started, I started, uh, I, had a, I built a very large technology company many years ago, and I raised uh, tens of millions of dollars to get it started. But I know I would never built a company that big, so I knew I needed to have people around me to help me. So one of the things that I did is I went and I approached a gentleman who comes from one of the wealthiest families in Canada. In fact, his father started, was one of the co-founders of the Four Seasons Hotels, like just unbelievable wealth these guys have. Anyway, he was a vice president at IBM, and um, he was always looking to help young companies. So I offered him a piece of the company if he would come and help me build mine. He said, absolutely, I like what you're doing, I like what you're building, I will happy to come. So he came and, he, and we were hiring people, we were going crazy, we were building the company, I was excited, I thought we were doing really well. And after a month after he came on board, he said, Franco, I think I, fi I, think I know now whether you're gonna, what's, what's happening and I can give you some feedback. Are you interested? I said, sure, that'd be awesome. So he came into my office and I like that's me sitting there. And then he was standing over here and he starts talking to me. And he says, Franco, here's the feedback I have for you. And here's what he said to me. You're not going to make it. What well, would you say? <laughs> so gee, here, thanks. Here, here's my expression. What? Why not? We raised all this money. We're hiring all these people. We're, we're, why aren't we going to make it? And here's what he said to me. Because of you. That's a bit mean. To <laughs> he goes, what do you mean because of me? He goes, your ego is too big. This company will not make it because you will destroy it. It was like somebody just punched me in the stomach. So I said, well, well, well what do I do? What do I do? I don't understand, what do I got to do? And he goes, when you can do this, I'll know that you'll be okay. When you can do this. Now, this is one of the, he, this guy comes from one of the wealthiest families in Canada. This is what he did. He walks up to me. I'm sitting in my desk chair. And this is what he does. <laughs> please, please. You got to be my customer. You don't understand. I got a family. I got kids. You got to help me. Please. <laughs> Please, you're going to help me or what? Please, please, you're going to help me. You're going to help me or what? I'll 
help you if you let Play, go. Play. <laughs> he goes, when you can do that, we're going to be okay. <laughs> now, obviously, he exaggerated the point <laughs> for me to get that I was too proud to be that way with people. But I got it. I got what he meant. I got what he said. And I forgot that lesson when I made my first two phone calls in ACM. Let's give John a big hand. That was great. Great job, John. <laughs> great, man. <laughs> so my first phone call when I was trying to get customers went something like this. I, I mean, one of my first people I called was my cousin. Uh, I called my cousin and I said to him, uh, all right, I just started a new business and uh, I'm, it's long distance. I'm going to switch you over and I'm going to save you some money. And he goes, I'm okay, thanks, leave me alone. That was my first phone call. I go, that didn't go good. Then I called the second person, same phone, it didn't work. And the third, I had three phone calls that didn't work. And I said, okay, this is not working, I'm out. So I called my mentor, I said, listen, I'm quitting, no problem, keep the 500 bucks, I don't care, but uh, this is not for me, it doesn't work. And he goes, what do you mean it doesn't work? And I explain what happened and I go, that's not what we say. Well, it's favor, help try. So he goes, I'm coming over and we're going to practice. Okay. He came over and then it's funny, well, as he's practicing with me, I got reminded of that story that happened to me years ago with my business. But then he taught me a very powerful way to acquire customers in ACN. And here's the question he asked me. He said, Franco, tell me why you're doing ACN. And here's what, here's what I said to him. I said, well, you know, I want to make more money, more residual income. He goes, bull, why are you doing ACN? He goes, what do you mean? He goes, tell me the truth. I am the truth here. You're talking to truth here. Why are you doing this? He goes, well, I hate my life. I'm exhausted. I'm tired. And I got to take care of my parents now because my dad can't work. My mom can't work. And I'm responsible for them. And, I'm, and, and he says to me, then how does that make you feel? He goes, it's frustrating. I'm tired. I'm exhausted. I just want some time for me. I go, good. You're going to call people and tell them that. What? I'm not telling people that. I go, why not? It's embarrassing. I've got an image to uphold. What's wrong with you? And he goes, that's your problem. Until you can get a, you deal with that, you're not going to get any customers. People don't want to be sold. They want to know what you're going to, how you're, they're going to help you. So I got to tell him that. He goes, you got to tell him that. I don't want to tell him that. I don't care. You got to tell him that. So I looked at the phone, and the phone weighed like a thousand pounds. Are you sure I got to tell him that? There's no other way. No, there's no other way, Franco. You got to tell him your why. So I called back my cousin. I called him back, and uh, his name is Francesco. I said, Francesco, I got a favor to ask you. He goes, what's that? He goes, well, I don't know if you know, but right now, I am exhausted how hard I'm working. I sleep at the office most nights. And I was like nervous, guys. I was so shaking when I was saying this. And I said, you know, my mom and my dad, they're not, my mom's coming off a brain tumor, my, mar, my dad off heart surgery, and I got to take care of them. That's why I'm calling you. I need your help. And here's his answer. What do you need? I need you to be my long-distance customer. I just got involved in a new business, and I'm excited by it. I, I can see a way I can build some residual income to help them. Will you be my customer? He goes, sure. Why don't you say so? Unbelievable. <laughs> so I turned to my mentor and I said, it worked. He goes, no kidding. <laughs> so then I just started calling person after person after person after person after person after person. And it was just like magical. And then I started to become passionate about my wine. I really started sharing it. And I became proud to share. And all of a sudden this thing that I was embarrassed to talk about, I couldn't stop talking about. I just, it, it became like a badge of honor for me to share that with people, to be that real and that authentic with people. And people just responded to that. I was getting customer after customer after customer. Go, this is awesome. Oh, it is so exciting. Just because I could honestly share my why. Now, let me just tell you what the secret is with your why. There's three things that you got to learn about the why when you're sharing with people. Number one, what are you dealing with? Your circumstances. My circumstances was I, was, I was working really hard, going crazy, 
I got a, a mom and a dad that I could take care of financially. I was tired of what I was doing. I wanted to change my life. How was I feeling? I was stressed. I was exhausted. So you got to share your, what your emotional state is as well. And then share what you're excited about. So I'm excited. I started a new business. So I'm going to give you guys a script right now that's going to help you. And the reason is because, now look, you can, I know some of you have different teams and you have your own scripts. I personally like this script. You can use whatever script you want. But what's important is how many times you share your why in your script. So here's an example of a script. Hey, Mary, do you got a minute? Now you got to pause, okay? Let them say, yes, I got a minute. If they don't have time, don't force this conversation. Yes, I have time. What's going on? Great. Now, this next line is very important. I need a huge favor. And you pause. Now, why are you pausing? You're waiting to see the response. You want a positive response. If somebody says to you, what do you want now? That's not a good response. That means you have some issue with that person in your relationship with them. So if I ever get that response, I'll say, look, I'm just doing a survey to see what people say when I ask that question. Thank you. I got your answer. Have a wonderful day. That's it. I'm off the phone. Done. Okay? Let's get off. Because that conversation will not go well. Okay? So don't force the agenda. Okay? But most people are going to say, wait, what's up? Sure, what's going on? Now you share your why. And I want you to share it in such a way that they think you're going to need money. So for example... One of the things I, so for example, my why, and you, whatever your why is, I would say, so here, look, I don't know if you know this, but right now what I'm dealing with is I'm, I'm exhausted with the business that I have. I got to take care of my mom and dad. And it's been, it's, it's exhausting. I'm frustrated. I'm tired. And, but that's why I'm calling you. I need your help. Now, when I say that to people, oh, the first thing they're going to think about is, oh, my gosh, what does he want? And they, maybe he needs money. So they'll say, what do you want? What's up? What's going on? That's why I'm calling. I need your help. And you pause. And now you wait for them to respond. This is very important. you got to wait for them to respond. Now, most of the time they're going to respond, no problem. What is it? What's going on? What's up? That's most of the time. So I found something that's going to help me. I got started with a global company. If I can offer you blank service, now it's up to you what service you want to per perfect or get great at. I always recommend people master two services. We have tons of services. Master two of them. Get really good. Like whether it's going to be your Vodafone or electricity or internet and electricity, whatever. Obviously electricity is one of the ones you should get really good at. It's a phenomenal service. Helps you increase your billing. And then pick another one. But get really good at them. Now what do I mean by really good at them? What I mean is you, can, you, can, you, you know all the frequently asked questions. You know all the ins and outs. You know all the tricks about that service. So get really good at two services, okay? I just want to start with a global company. If I can offer you electric service at the same or better price with no risk to you, would you please give my service a try? And then you pause, okay? Now, if they say yes, don't freak out. Say, great, sign them up. Some people, when somebody says yes, they act like shocked that somebody said yes. And then I've seen IBOs talk the other person out of signing up as their customer. Don't do that. Expect the yes. Say, great, let's go to my website, let's sign you up. It's very, very simple, okay? If they ask questions, this is now, most people are going to ask questions. So about 70 to 80% are going to ask questions. That's totally normal. What do you do if they ask questions? Answer their question briefly. So whatever the question is, under, know what the, what the answer is, like really quick, like one line, a line and a half, because most questions are a line and a line and a half answer, but then here's the key, go right back to your why. Say, so listen, you know, we're, who's, who's the company? The name of the company is, you know, ACM, and we're partnered with Click Energy, uh, but more importantly, let me tell you this, you know, you really help, you'd really be helping me and my family, you'd be helping me change my life, so you please do me a huge favor and give the service a try. Always come back to the why every single time. And, and, and I like throwing this in. I'm calling you. You're one of the people I call because I know I can count on you. That's why I called you. And so then the, if they ask another question, no problem. Here's what I found. The average person will ask two to three, sometimes max four questions before they're maxed out of questions. And every single time, I'll bring it back to the why. And if you come back to the why every single time, eventually you will break them down and then they will support you. That's what I learned. So always go back to your why, always share your why. But more importantly, you'll be helping me, my family, my dad, my mom. You'll be helping me change my life. 
and putting me on the right course to help them. So that's why I know I can count on you. Will you give the service a try? And then that's it. Then you sign them up. It's really simple. Remember, persistency of your why defeats all objections eventually. And the reason is because people do really genuinely want to help you. They do. But you have to keep reminding them of that. And it's not about selling them on anything. Okay? So that's the, I would, I would that, start practicing that script with each other. Start practicing with your teams. And then get your 60, 75, 100 points. Now, I want to teach you one more thing before we close the training. And that's how to get 60, 100 points from people you do business with. This to me has been very important to acquiring customers and having my organization acquire a lot of customers. And it's a, I call it the two-week strategy to 60 to 100 points. Those you do business with and anyone you pay should be your customer. So one of the things I like doing is um, for those of you that have people you pay, here's what I recommend, okay? Fire them all unless they're already your customer. Okay, so if they're already your customer, keep them. If they're not, fire them. Now, what are you going to do? Here's what you're going to do. You're going to interview four to five of each of those categories. So a financial advisor, real estate agent, a mortgage broker, whatever, whoever you do business with, landscaper, doesn't matter, uh, house cleaner, doesn't matter. You're going to interview four to five minimum. And here's what you're going to say to them. You'll say, John, I'm interviewing right now uh, five real estate agents. I may pick you, I may not pick you. I don't know yet, but I'm going to interview you. I'm going to ask you a few questions to see if we're compatible. But here's what I'm going to tell you. If I do pick you, I expect you to be a customer of one of my services or more. And I'm also going to refer people to you, but you're also going to refer people to me for my services. Because I was taught from my family, and if you were taught that from your family, then from, from your friends or wherever you are, from your mentors, that if I help you, we help each other. That's how I do business. Are you okay with that? Now, a lot of times they're going to ask in this situation, well, what kind of services do you have? So I'll show my online store. And quite a few times, you're going to get customers signing up, or those people signing up as your customer right there. Well, I'll try out your service. No problem. So I'll try it right now. But here's what I tell them. That's great. It doesn't mean I'm going to choose you. I still have to interview the other people just as long as we're clear. And if I do go with you, I'm going to give you referrals. No problem. But I expect referrals from you. Deal? Deal. Great. Fantastic. So I'll do that with a lot of people. If you do that effectively, there's no reason why you can't get 60 to 100 points in a couple of weeks. Easy. Easy. Okay? Whether it's a landscaper, a dry cleaner, a bookkeeper, handyman, financial advisor, lawyer, insurance broker, pest control, accountant. Hey, why would you do business with someone who doesn't support you back? And I'll tell you a funny story. My cousin was my accountant. He no longer is. So I went to my cousin and I did the whole thing. And here's what my cousin said to me. He goes, no, I can't do business with you. I go, why not? Because you're my client. And? And he goes, well, it's not right. I go, where did you get that idea from? And here's what I told my cousin. Why do you think you're my accountant? Because you're good? No, you're my cousin. That's why I came to you. He goes, and I, I don't even know if you're expensive or not. I have no idea. You're just my cousin, so I came to you. He goes, oh. So I said, either you're going to be my customer or I'm going to fire you. He goes, you're not going to fire me. Yeah, you're fired. <laughs> so guess what? My cousin is no longer my accountant. I have another accountant now who's given me lots of business, and I refer lots of business to him. Is that a better relationship? Yeah, that's a healthy relationship. That's the way business should be. You help me, I help you. Not one way, I don't understand these people that are one-way streets. Does that make sense? Okay, so here's what you want to do. Make sure you ask for referrals for all these people, by the way, because it's a very powerful way to get a ton of customers. Who do you know that's going to help? And then always share your why. I love sharing the why to give people a sense of what's possible, okay? And then customer testimonials. How many of you have Facebook? Raise your hand. Okay, very good. How do you use Facebook? Really quickly, how do you use Facebook? I, do, I would never recommend you acknowledge your customer on Facebook. I would recommend your customer put a testimonial for you on Facebook. So your customer can post and ask your customer a favor. Hey, can you do me a favor? Would you mind posting me uh, a testimonial on Facebook? And you tell them what to say. 
So for example, if you're able to save your customer some money, say, hey, oh my God, I just got a cell phone service from you, John. Thank you so much. You saved me this much money this year. I really appreciate it. Or thank you for getting my energy service. You saved me this much money this year. My family and I really appreciate you. You're phenomenal. So have them post a testimonial on your Facebook. It is 100 times more powerful than you posting that for yourself, okay? Uh, thank you cards. I love sending them a lottery ticket um, with a note that says, thank you for making my dreams come true. Hopefully this will make your dreams come true. And if you win, I get 50%. So that's the kind of note that I, uh, I write on there, okay? And then over time, upsell them. Guys, you have so many services in Australia. It's incredible. Upsell them, okay? Upsell them to other services. Now, here's your call to action. Your goal is to get 20 customers this week. You master your why. You do the business service that we just talked about. There's no reason why all of you cannot get 20 customers this week. So who's up to playing a game to get 20 customers this week? Who's up for the game? Okay. Now, I want you all to hold each other accountable to do that. Can we agree to that? Will you agree to hold each other accountable? So right now, I want you to pick a partner right here. Everybody pick a partner, okay? Pick a partner, okay? And say, I'm holding you to account for 20 customers in the next seven days. <laughs> Deal? Awesome, okay? Now, here's the other thing you want to do. Once you've got your 20 customers, can you teach your team to get 20 customers? A hundred percent. And if you can teach your team to get 20 customers, can your team then teach their team to get 20 customers? Then how fast can you build your residual income? How fast can you build your ACN empire? Guys, you have to understand, this is the time for now for your business. This is ACN's moment right now. This is your moment in ACN history right now. There's never been a better time to build your empire inside of ACN, never. Australia is leading the way around the world. You are the example for what's possible through the ACN family worldwide. It's who you are. Just so you know, you're an inspiration to North America right now. You're an inspiration to Europe. You're an inspiration to people all over the world. People are looking at Australia. Wow, look at what they're doing there. You have to understand who you are. You really do. You know, we're looking to you now for guidance. We're looking to you now. Wow, how are they doing what they're doing? You're special. We're, we're blessed to have you as part of the ACN family because every time we're taking turns, it's now you have the baton. It's your turn to lead the way. It's your turn to lead the charge. It's your turn to lead the way we change lives all over the world. Guys, it's been my pleasure and my honor to be here in Australia. God bless. We'll see you all tomorrow. Have a wonderful rest of the weekend. Welcome to my